Content creators, influencers, they have multiple titles. But these are the people who rule powerful algorithms and have millions following their trends. Initially seen as trendsetters in lifestyle and entertainment, influencers are increasingly playing a significant role in shaping public opinion. Their ability to reach millions of followers in a short time gives them a unique platform to disseminate information, raise awareness and sometimes even shape the narrative. Some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias, to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. Majority of you are very easy to manipulate. Social media has dramatically transformed how we receive and perceive information about wars and conflicts with real-time unfiltered updates becoming the norm. This has been particularly evident since the Arab Spring when the phrase emerged that this revolution won't be televised but tweeted. It marked a pivotal change on how conflicts are reported and followed, showing social media is no longer a tool only for communications but also one for mobilization. As social media has evolved, it's been joined by platforms like Snapchat, Instagram and TikTok, adding new dimensions to how wars are perceived, documented and shared. Even US presidential hopefuls are paying heed on even blanket bans on apps such as TikTok. We really do need to ban TikTok once and for all. The war in Gaza is a clear example of this new social media dynamic, one which we'll explore over the next half hour. Bombing hospital. Okay, now tell them there's an escape route south to Egypt. Attention Palestinians, head south to Egypt. Okay, now bomb the escape route. Nicole and Rathbon talk to Al Jazeera. They say for the hard of hearing, you have to shout the loudest. And for the people who are unable to see, you have to draw big figures. What you do is taking war and misery and turning it into something funny. Let's start with you, Rathbon. Why do you do it? Well, uh, I think, first of all, I have a spine and I understand basic moral principles. And I think that it's a pretty cut and dry uh, issue, a pretty, pretty obvious thing that's happening in Gaza. And I want to use, um, you know, my knowledge, my whatever skills or talents I might possess to call attention to what's happening because it's awful. Nicole, you've been doing this for a while. You do political satire. Uh, why have you taken a real focus onto what is happening in Gaza? My reason is simple, and I'm going to start by saying comedy is taken seriously when politics are a joke. I'm saying this because when we do comedy and we're called insensitive, it's a big and very large group of people that they don't know what's happening. So satire and comedy makes them understand a little bit better about uh, what we are trying to say. That's a very good point that you touched upon, insensitivity. Uh, that's something that people think, and especially when you talk about something, a conflict which is so steeped in controversy where there are very, uh, you know, uh, opinionated sides on both ends, uh, how do you configure that this is insensitive and this is not? Because we're not referring, I'm not referring to a public that already knows what's happening. And for example, we had a large conversation today by saying when something very sensitive is happening, you cannot post comedy. But I'm not talking to a public that already knows. The public who already knows supports my content. But I'm having this kind of, I'm calling them like snowflakes, that they don't know what's happening outside. And uh, we have this generation that simply in Western world, um, they have no idea, they live in a bubble. So for them to understand any kind of very sensitive subject, I have to come at them with a, with a way to make them understand a little humor or the jokes, and eventually they will understand the, the issue itself. Because I receive a lot of support from uh, Arab countries, but they know, and they help my videos to have visibility. But that's it, it's not my target, because I'm, I'm speaking numbers and facts. For example, uh, Spain, a country that I, I know very well, uh, it's divided in 20% people that know, 20% people that they are afraid of speaking, and 60% that they don't know how to put Palestine on the map. Right, so you're connecting the Middle East to Europe. Rathbun, you bring it to North America. You've come here from New York, and I see that you actually did a, did a skit 
on just walking in the street. Tell me, how, how did that idea came about and why did you do it? Uh, yeah, I come from the United States. It's the global superpower. I see it, uh, what's happening in Gaza as sort of, sort of an outgrowth of US imperialism. Um, and there's just a cartoonish sort of image of the Middle East in, in America. And um, like Nicole, you know, I'm satirizing that. And um, so I think you're referring to me walking around in Doha and uh, sort of making it as if I'm seeing Hamas everywhere. Uh, but that's sort of the image that you get from the Israeli propaganda system. So I'm just sort of showcasing how silly that is and how idiotic it is. It's not insensitive what we're doing. What's insensitive is the atrocity that's happening. We're merely calling attention to what's happening. And we're trying to do it in a way like Nicole was saying. We're trying to communicate these ideas. We're trying to spread the message. We want to be effective. Um, we're, we're going up against, a, you know, a trillion dollar pre-R industry, uh, you know, and we're trying to do that with, uh, with TikTok videos. And I don't always do satirical stuff. I mean, even in, the, even in my satirical sketches, there, I, like, I, I research them. You know, I try to you know, impart a lot of education and history into the conflict that I don't think you're going to get from corporate media, you know, uh, from Western media especially especially in the United States. What was the response like? Because you're reaching a demographic, like Nicole said, which doesn't know uh, what's going on. So how did people react to it? Because you're, you're seen as somebody who, who does things that are funny, and now you're changing gear and you're bringing something very serious into the equation. See, I don't see myself as like a comedian or, or funny necessarily. I think there is some sort of humor in my per personality and what I do, but I, I'm more so there's a seriousness behind it, and it's meant to be educational. You know, I'm trying, we're trying to combat propaganda. Uh, so, yeah, I, I received a, a mixed, uh, I mean, any, anytime you create something that's, I guess, a, a video that's sort of controversial, you're going to get mixed reviews about it. You know, people want, want me to stop, or they want to, they, they issue death threats, or, or, but a lot of people, do get the message. They do see what what I'm trying to do and, and understand the truth in it. And so I'm just sharing the message as best as I can and the people that it's gonna, it's gonna affect, or that's how it's gonna affect them. I mean, I can't really say anything more about that, about how it's gonna be received. I think a lot of people don't realize that doing a video on TikTok or YouTube or Facebook or Twitter Will get you death, death threats. You you alluded to that. Are you is that a real issue? Are you seeing death threats? Does it affect you? Uh, it doesn't affect me uh, in in the sense that I'm going to stop or uh, you know anything like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I get a lot of messages or emails uh, or comments, and I understand that you know if if people are indoctrinated uh, by you know the U.S. propaganda system for many years that they're going to not hear my message and, and think well of it. So, uh, but I think it's just part of it. I mean, so I just, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't take it too seriously or too personally, I guess I should say. Right. And you've been receiving the same things, right? Threats, uh, abuse, and a lot of it. Why do you think that it is important for you to accept it? and carry on? And why is it your work, the work that you do is important? If I don't have a passion for what I'm doing, I cannot last in a trend by doing two, three videos and just to feel good with myself. If you have a passion, you have to have um, consistency. And uh, you cannot see so many videos with butchered kids and so much blood and so much pain and not just go crazy. So you need to have a passion in order to do this kind of content and you need to understand that after maybe crying because you see so much pain, you have to uh, go with your purpose and with your mission to make people understand. And I'm not making only comedy, it's a, it's a political satire because when we're talking about Palestine and everything is happening, we have to touch subjects like uh, democracy and what democracy means and how customized uh, customize is uh, um, 
according to the skin color, to the rights, to the country, to the religion, about the fake freedom. I mean, I'm European. They say I'm free. But if I protest for Palestine in Paris, I get arrested. If I speak against Israel because they are committing a genocide, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking against the Jews. And this narrative, you cannot even imagine. They say they are democratic, they have freedom. They have the freedom to choose their own customized dictators. Because how can we think about the politics? Like diapers in Europe, you have to change them and for the same reason. So if you have the right and that power to choose your own politicians, why don't you use the same power to be careful who you're choosing and their politics outside your, the borders of your country. So this is what I don't like. They like to King Kong their chest that we're free. We have democracy. In Arab world, people, they don't understand. They don't know. They don't know that all the education, the first alphabet came from Syria, the oldest capital, for example. They don't, my country, Spain, 800 years of Arabic domination of Omeya, they left a culture behind. And Europe, when they went to other countries, they left destruction. And that's the difference. So the two things that I want to touch on is that the words that you use, you, you repeatedly call it genocide, one. How did you reach that conclusion? And two, both of you talk about frustration from corporate media. Is that frustration only in the people of your age group, of your backgrounds, or are you seeing that in a wider audience, which might be a lot younger, and who's using the social media a lot more than, than, than the older generation? My reference to corporate media is just the fact that they are... Uh, completely invested in serving their constituents. And those constituents are not the people of countries. Uh, they're not working class people. They're, you know, elites, whatever you want to call them. And they uh, have a separate agenda. And uh, so we're, we're battling that. I mean, they, they don't want people to know the truth. Uh, it's the Israel-Hamas war. It's not the genocide of the Gaza Strip, or it's not the illegal occupation of uh, perpetrated by Israel. You'll never hear these phrases in Western media, uh, as far as I can tell. I haven't seen that. But that's what it is. I mean, this, these people are being ethnically cleansed from their own land. And yes, they are being genocided. And, um, you know, it's we feel hopeless. We feel helpless. But what can we do? Uh, so... I'm a teacher, I'm a, you know, I feel like my skill set is to communicate and uh, articulate ideas and spread messages. And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. But what about the audience? I'm, I want, I'm more interested in to see where do you think your message is reverberating oh, right. with? Yeah, who yeah. is, well, who's listening to it? Yeah. Who's watching it? Who's yeah. liking it and spreading it? And where are you getting feedback from? So ideally, I mean, for anybody who is in the business of, getting their message across, you'd want to hear back on well, whether that message was received. I don't really pay attention to those things. I'm on, you know, I'm using a social media platform uh, that is very popular. Uh, this is what we have now. Uh, and, you know, decades ago, you didn't have content creators. You didn't have singular influencers. It was more important for media corporations to set the agenda. But like they were saying earlier today, it's like the influencers, the content creators, are now becoming more and more powerful in this age of social media where you can pick up your phone and you can become the media itself. And I think that's a powerful tool and I wanna use that to you know, promote working class values and principles and to call out you know, injustices, social injustices. I mean, how many people in the world know that Israel didn't, <laughs> under international law, Israel has no right to defend itself. How many people know that, you know, Hamas is an armed resistance group struggling for human rights? Uh, you know, there's two social groups in question here. One has human rights and one does not have human rights. But Hamas is classified as a terrorist group by the European Union, yes, because the United States, Israel. Right, because it's terrorism when poor, vulnerable, defenseless people try to fight back against a militant police state. But when that, when that rich militant police state bombs a defenseless population, that's called democracy promotion. You know, it's just a double standard at all times. 
I, I don't know what to do except for satirize it, you know, um, because that's that's what we can do. I mean, I don't. So, Nicole, double standards and hypocrisy is is something that keeps coming up in these conversations. We were sitting with the with a wider group earlier as well. Uh, why do you think it is important to highlight it and paint it to the world as such? Uh, and and why does it exist? Because people they don't want to see their own defects. Nobody wants to hear when I'm telling them that they have double standards or that they are cruel, they don't have a heart or they don't have humanity. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear the fact that, I'm going to give you an example. Every time I go to a cinema, I have this publicity before, donate for people in Somalia or any other country, they need food. At the end of the movie, nobody donated anything because people, they don't like to feel guilty. And that's why, uh, on the contrary of um, um, Andrew, I really like to study my public because we live in a world where everybody wants to feel a victim, nobody wants to be the villain. And they constantly, constantly need... I mean, we live in a world where I cannot say... I, I have to believe that God is non-binary. Or I cannot say Merry Christmas because people feel offended. I mean, they are going on the streets with those things. A very vulnerable and very sensitive community. So if not, today they are not marching for the penguins in Antarctica for not having gluten-free bread, and I have to teach those people. So they need a villain. I don't have a problem in giving them a villain. I don't, I target him them actually, because if I go with emotions, I'm going to feed that kind of um, ego that they have. Everybody's emotional, everybody's a victim. Well, when you give them a villain who's telling them what's the issue in the world, they're going to study what I'm talking about, just to come at me and tell me, you're wrong. So actually, I'm doing the same thing that Western media does. So I'm making them very outraged, because honestly, um, all the, the phones got smarter and the people the other way around. So the, th all those devices are really smart and we need to understand that those devices are made by, by a human brain. It cannot be smarter than us. But you know, they are lazy and everybody likes to complain and everybody wants to have this syndrome of I'm a victim. Don't worry, I can give you a villain, but a villain who will, will tell you the truth. I'm going to make you so outraged that you're going to come at me and you're going to study what I'm talking about just to contradict me. But you're going to find out in the process that what I was telling was truth. So this is actually the same thing that they were feeding us. But the only difference that I'm not using fake news. So it's good. I'm, I'm actually proud that they are giving me good examples. And when they try to uh, ban, to, to shut us up, to censor us, I feel proud. If they don't do this, that means I'm not doing anything right. We are not trying to shut down the Israeli propaganda. No, we are just laughing. It, it, it reached to a point to be funny. We're not trying to shut them up. No, come at us, show us what, what, what more you can do. So when they're trying to censor me, that means I'm doing something great. I'm not gonna go being a victim. No, because I started, I don't mind being the villain, just for them to understand. So yeah, I study my public quite well. Let's talk about the tools that you use. Uh, social media is ever expanding. Uh, there are new apps, new avenues of, uh, of getting your message across, but you are using one particular application which seems to be getting through, also uh, making a lot of people angry, including the United States government, which is talking about banning this particular app. Why is it, and why is that particularly your choice of medium? It's a good question. I think what I've learned is that TikTok is a, a, a very powerful editing software, and it's highly engaging. Um, and you know, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's the thing that people are using now, and uh, there's never been something kind of like that. Um, but, yeah, I find that, uh, I don't know, TikTok is just, it's not like I was, I, I was banned on TikTok. I was releasing music videos, and I was already, uh, they, 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 I was making, like, you know, uh, political songs, and, and they banned me, and then, I didn't like TikTok for, for a while, but then uh, I just figured I'd start talking about it because that's sort of how the, the app works. You know, it works better when you're, you know, looking at a camera and speaking. And I, I had no idea that it was going to catch on. And I mean, this is I'm, I'm, the, the page that I started is only a few months old, you know, but it's somehow, uh, you know, my message was, you know, um, became popular and 
I'm just kind of going with it. <laughs> and why do you think that uh, that particular choice of medium is important for you? Or do you think that it is, uh, you have to use all of those platforms to get your message across? I'm using all of them. Um, I don't know if TikTok, I mean, uh, has some political thing behind to support. I mean, it supported a lot, but it banned also a lot. So it's just uh, uh, funny to see politicians like Nikki Haley being so outraged and saying that uh, one hour of TikTok is turning our teenagers 17% more radicals. Like, why are you so scared? I mean, you have all the media. You can fact check everything. We can get banned because we don't have the facts. Like, uh, Al Jazeera can fact check some, something and they can prove it's true. I, uh, I'm just Nicole. Why are you so afraid of me? And the masses are important. So it's the first time in a long time that a massive group of people, especially how we call it, the Gen Z generation, the, the new generation, that they are speaking and they imagine the frustration of paid propaganda to be taken down by so many teenagers. Because we know that they paid millions and billions in apps, in Google, in, in YouTube. And actually, I don't mind the territory if it's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. I, I don't care. I just do the same what I need to say because my soul is burning and just take it. I'm translate, I can translate in all the languages I know and <clears throat> just who wants to listen will listen. But I, I'm doing my job before. I know exactly who I'm talking to and I know exactly who's going to get hurt. And people have to understand that when they talk about this uh, war and this situation, it's not only, only about the conflict it's itself. We cannot even call it a conflict. I mean, the hypocrisy in Europe, oh, Russia and Ukraine. I, I, I hate any type of violence, but there are two armies fighting. We don't see two armies here. We saw Mossad in movies that they are very strong, the best army, nuclear weapons. Against who? Against who? They have their kids with rocks and, and they, they have Hamas, that they don't have the same weaponry. So we cannot talk about the conflict. So when you see all these Oh, all the, the, if they have blue eyes and they are blonde, come to Europe, you're educated. But no, if they are Arabs, oh, careful. And, and that's the thing, it doesn't matter how you send the message, if you know exactly how to send. And you have to study the other side as well, because they did a good job for a very long time. My last question to you is, is not just to content creators, but serious broadcasters as well. The war in Gaza has gone on for weeks. Uh, the, it's not because of the dearth of information, it's because of the actions that are deliberately being taken. Are you making a difference? And if you're not, what's driving you? What's driving me? I mean, like I said, I, it's, it's just having a spine and having basic moral understandings, having critical thinking, and I guess you could say just a commitment to uh, principles. Uh, basic principles. What about you, Nicole? I have to say that Western world really failed Palestine. And I want to represent here the Western world by saying that I'm really sorry. And I have to wash the scenes by saying that if we didn't do it until today or until 7th of October and we start doing this, uh, we have to apologize first. And uh, we, have to, we have to understand that if if you don't have a heart, it, it, it takes just a heart. You don't need anything else. You don't need religion. You don't need politic views. You don't need anything but a heart to understand those things. So what drives me, it's I had rage, but now I have passion. Because I think most of the countries of the world, they are ruled by Israel, but Palestine. We think we're free in Palestine when Palestine freed us and showed us what human values we lack. This is what happened, actually. They're suffering and they're dying, but they liberated an entire world. And that, for me, is the most important thing. And it's not enough anymore for me. It's not enough to hop on a trend and feel good. And it's not enough not saying that there are big voices in this world. And they're saying we're not obliged to talk. Yes, you are. We're seeing your movies. We're buying your music. We're calling you influencers. We trust you. So yes people are obliged to talk about those things because it only takes a heart. So this is my message. If I have to condemn something today, I condemn people who are silent. And I'm really sorry from Western world that we failed them for such a long time. Rathbone and Nicole, thank you very much for talking to me today. Thank, thank you. you, thank you for having me.